This week is too big for me to handle alone. I need all of your help. Strike a pose. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Comics, Beer, and Sci-Fi, and we are celebrating crossovers on this episode. That's right, but first let's thank our sponsors, Northwestern Tech, and our viewers. Thank all of you for watching. Let's get started. So, it's crossover week here on Comics, Beer, and Sci-Fi, so what is a crossover? Well, crossovers aren't really anything new, from Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, to King Kong versus Godzilla, to Alien versus Predator. Creators have always known that if you take two beloved characters and put them together, it's gonna mean, hopefully, box office magic. The comic book world was slower to catch on, as although Batman and Superman began sharing the comic book world's finest in 1941, they never actually appeared in the same story until issue 71 in 1954. At Marvel in the early 1960s, not only did Stan Lee and his collaborators set their stories in the real city of New York, but the characters all inhabited the same world. Therefore, in Amazing Spider-Man number one, Spidey tries to join the Fantastic Four. And in another Fantastic Four issue, they were recruited to fight the Hulk. And eventually, of course, as we know, a whole group of Marvel characters formed into the Avengers. Of course, this made it possible for various characters to team up with other characters and fight other characters' villains. In the 1990s, this reached sort of a ridiculous peak when the new corporate owners of Marvel wanted Wolverine in every single issue of every single character because his presence sold so many issues. Of course, now with the Marvel and DC cinematic and TV universes, crossovers are the name of the game. With DC's TV universe even allowing Arrow, Supergirl, Flash, and the Legends of Tomorrow to interact. And so it appears there's never been a better time to be a geek as all of our characters are now in the same world and able to interact with one another. Hey, where is everybody? Well, it looks like the Avengers disassembled, but anyways, we're gonna go to Joe Johnson from Hollywood Diecast. Welcome to Hollywood Car Minute. I'm Joe Johnson. I am joined by Mel Guthrie, and behind us is one of the most iconic vehicles from television, the GMC van from the A-Team. Mel, you gotta tell me about this car. This is the uh, later in the series version where they blacked out the GMC because they weren't getting sponsor money anymore from them. Oh, <laughs> interesting. George Papard grew up in Dearborn, Michigan, got autographs from a couple of the guys, mm -hmm. still hoping to get Mr. T someday. Yeah, he's on my bucket list. I would love to meet Mr. T, that would be great. The van looks beautiful. Do you know what kind of work went into this? Was the whole thing painted? This car is pretty much in the same condition as I bought it, and it was somebody that uh, knew of me, and they said they wanted to go to a good home. It was actually, I think, the second Hollywood car that I ended up with. All right, Mel, thanks for uh, sharing it with us, and I love it when a plan comes together. I'm Joe Johnson. Thanks for watching Hollywood Car Minute. We'll see you next time. And it's good to be back to normal with my co-host. So serious. Yeah, to find normal. Uh, well, I thought it was normal. Uh, Mark, tell us about this week's movies, please. God welcomes you, my children. I am Father Myers, here to send you on the righteous path to what's coming out this week in a motion picture cathedral near you. Being the week after Thanksgiving, this is a light week for the Lord. But nevertheless, there is a film that must be dealt with which is the supernatural thriller Incarnate, starring Aaron Eckhart of The Dark Knight, who must use his ability to enter the mind of a possessed boy controlled by a powerful demon. You're gonna burn. Oh my God. And the Lord saith what's coming out in 2017. Myers, I want my segment back. The power of Christ compels you. Back, foul demon. Back. Mark, I'm Jewish. Oh, here's what's coming out in 2017. Coming out in early 2017 is the first spin-off movie of the Lego series, 
the Lego Batman movie. In this family-friendly version of the Cape Crusader, Batman goes on a personal journey to find himself and to save Gotham. I can't wait for this movie. You know why? Because he's Batman. Let's go defeat the Joker. Woo! We're going on a family trip. I can wear my costume too. Well, luckily for us, you left your costume back in. <laughs> oh, no, under your clothes. That's perfect. <laughs> Coming out in March, Loki himself, Tom Hiddleston, and the new Miss Marvel, Brie Larson, lead an all-star cast into the jungle for the King Kong origin story, Kong Skull Island. This guy isn't monkeying around. That's one big monkey. Also coming out in March is Power Rangers, which is the movie version of the hit American-Japanese hybrid show of the 90s, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Yeah, Q hasn't shut up about that since the announcement of it last year, and it better be good, too. I've killed Rangers before. It's happening. Also coming out next June is the long-awaited film version of the DC Comics' Mother Superior of Superheroines, Wonder Woman, starring Star Trek's Chris Pine and Gal Gadot, whose character was already introduced in Batman vs. Superman. Yeah, that's one tough cookie. I wouldn't want to be on the wrong side of that lasso. The Lord has showed me the error of my ways and has told me that we must join forces to combat evil, real or imagined. All right, that calls for a toast. Ooh, what's this? Oh, that's my holy water. We'll be right back with more Comic Spear and Sci-Fi. Jill, I want to take a moment and acknowledge our sponsors at Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech has successfully taught HVAC technicians since 1979, and HVAC is all they do. They offer hands-on training and have four national certifications. They offer field experience instructors. They have convenient schedule options. They're centrally located in Southfield, and they have nine classrooms, and it's a family-owned school. You know, best of all, the program is only 10 and a half months long, so students can enter the workforce in less than a year. For more information, go to northwesterntech.edu. Here at Perrin, no problems is more than just a beer. It's the way we brew and it's our way of life. I'm Andy and I'm Mr. Fixit for Perrin Brewing Company. There is endless amounts of work around here for me to do. It doesn't matter if it's bolts or beer, I can make it happen or not. I own 100 acres of land now and I'm proud of that. On my land, I grow everything needed to make a beer and it's a beautiful thing. No Problems 15-pack available in stores now. Fifth Avenue in Royal Oak is your favorite club destination and holiday party headquarters. Fifth Avenue's private second floor is perfect for banquets, concerts, reunions, or corporate events. Complete with multiple seating arrangements, stage, state-of-the-art audio-visual, pool, catered food and beverage packages with the best service in Metro Detroit. We can create a custom plan to fit your budget. Give your employees and guests the experience they deserve and book your event at Fifth Avenue in Royal Oak. Welcome back to Comics, Beer, and Sci-Fi. Where we talk about comics, beer, and sci-fi. Do you bleed? You will, if you don't go to GLB Retail. Which is Michigan's largest gaming and comic book store. And we're gonna go to Rob, who's gonna tell us what's new this week. Hi, I'm Rob, back with Casey from Comics, Beer, and Sci-Fi. And we're talking about this week's top picks. Casey, first up, I've got Ghost Rider, number one, new series for 2016. I, first of all, I love the car. I right. love the fact that Ghost Rider has been switching things up a little bit. You go from Johnny Blaze, who's been two-wheeling it for over 10 years in the series, 
Now we have a guy that's been around since 2013, Robbie Reyes. He's the muscle car ghost rider. You see him, he's right on top of it. He still has the chains. Well, he's a mechanic. He's got the flaming head. Well, yeah, because this started with the 2013 right. uh, Marvel Now movement. Mm -hmm. And when they brought this character to light, I think it was after, what, Secret Wars? Yeah. I'm interested to see how they make him stand out. I already love the helmet. So I well, love the car. Skull, I guess. But yeah, the anyway, skull. definitely give it a look. All right, now, Casey, before we've talked about my enjoyment of Sandman, we are going to Marvel in this case. And the reason I bring this up, Jeff Lemire writes on it. I've enjoyed a lot of what he's done. First time I read him with Sweet Tooth, but strange character, Moon Knight, not someone I really ever thought I'd be talking about, to be honest. I haven't talked about Moon Knight since 2011. Mm -hmm. We've got the first trade paperback out, the first five issues compiled. The series has been really successful. This guy really doesn't have powers, he just has the ability to revive himself in the mm. moonlight. He gets stronger Yeah. when the moon's out or full moon, he can see better, he's stronger, faster. And more stuff. vicious. More like Wildcat from, yeah. from DC Comics. Definitely. You know, he's a boxer, he's a fighter, no real powers, but just beats the you know heck out of a bunch of bad guys. If you were interested in Moon Knight or think you might be, this is the direction I'd go. All right, Casey, well, Christmas is coming up. We've got uh, a lot of stuff here at GOB that you can look through to... Uh, well, you see what I like. Yeah, absolutely. The figures, the action figures. Um, <laughs> statues are, I think, a great gift. They uh, they look nice. They're fun to have. You can have them beat each other up. For me, this is home decoration. There you go. Okay. Casey, another great thing for the season for comic book lovers or people that are just getting into comics, graphic novels. Um, the big books. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you've got compilations like these two um, that are just some of the best stories from an individual character. It's a great way to either continue a collection somebody has or to throw them feet first into a new character or just one that they love. Yeah, because you kind of get at least three to five books in one with mm -hmm. these graphic novels. Yeah. And you can't go wrong when these novels in particular, movies are made of them now. Mm -hmm. Doctor Strange just released last mm -hmm. month. Now we have Wonder Woman coming out real soon. Yep. All right, Rob, well, we have board games. We've got no shortage of board games here I at see, GOB. looking around. Isles and Isles. What's yeah. this one? Well, the first one I want to talk about, this is actually an expansion for a great game, Betrayal at the House on the Hill. Real fun game with at least three players. You go around exploring a haunted house, and at one point, one of you guys can become the traitor. Is it scary? Uh, I would say playing it with my friends can be scary, but that's mostly because, you know, we've been enjoying a good drink for a while by that point. Maybe I'll try to play this with Mark and Brad, our movie buffs back at the studio. Give it a shot. It fits though. Sure, absolutely. And then you've got one there. Well, this is a beer crafters game. Mm -hmm. Based on uh, what I'm seeing here, it looks like the Monopoly board game of beer, but you were telling me otherwise. It's pretty interesting. If you've got somebody that loves craft beer or loves gaming, or definitely if they love both, let them give this one a try. It's actually a really solid game. Shannon, I got you covered. Merry Christmas. Thanks for coming to hang out with us. And happy holidays. Now we're going to go to Q, who's going to tell us about the biggest TV event of the year. This is Q from Comics Bear Sci-Fi. And since this is crossover week, I had to go get some help to give you this week's TV lowdown. So this week was DC's big crossover week, and it started off with Supergirl, even though they didn't really have a lot in there, they really just popped in at the end. But Supergirl has gotten a hundred times better since his jump to the CW. You could tell they suffered with the budget a little bit. They're no longer in the cave, they're in the building now. I think everybody needs to give Supergirl another try. Going to The Flash on Tuesday, now this is where the fun really began. Barry went out and just recruited everybody. So everybody met in the Hall of Justice. That's right, the Hall of Justice. It was Easter eggs thrown all over the place on The Flash. Flash was excellent. Then we jumped to Arrow, and Arrow was also celebrating its 100th episode. Then we get to the action part, Legends of Tomorrow. Cisco forgave Barry, spoiler alert. Dr. Stein has a daughter, spoiler alert. The big epic recording that we didn't know what was completed on it, and hopefully Rip Hunter will be returning soon. But all in all, I give this epic crossover a 10 out of 10, and no, that's not because of my DC bias. It really is a 10 out of 10. Best team up ever! Thanks guys for all your help. I don't think I could have done it without you. Well, recently, Shannon got out to Washington Township to check out the Brown Iron Brew House. Guys, why don't we watch it? All right. I'm Beer Man. 
In January of 2015, the husband and wife team of Tim and Patty Eisenbraun opened Brown Iron Brew House, an old world German style beer hall and smokehouse with their partner and chef, Denny Smiljanowski. I love being here. I love working with Tim. I love being with my husband. It's just been great actually working together, but not too close. Tim is the brown iron brewer and purchases the beer, while Patty handles pretty much everything else. I went for the super trifecta of craziness. Not only did I want to start a business, we decided that we were going to build this facility. It was, it was so many things that were, went on at the time. It was the coldest winter ever, it was right before we broke construction. It was the wettest spring we ever had. I mean, there were delays on delays. Tim and I thought, it's just a, going to be a mom and pop thing. We hope people come. The first week we had over 6,000 guests. It was overwhelming for us. And the excitement that came from the community was something that wasn't really expected right off the bat. People just grasped onto the whole craft beer scene instantly. We've been coming here since before the, like, the pre-opening. We were here for that, and then we came. We were here once a week for a year. We didn't miss a week for a whole year. Brown Iron has returned the love back to the community by hosting countless fundraisers and special events, including beer versus wine dinners and tap showcases with some of the best breweries. The staff is awesome. I mean, we love the people here. Obviously, all of us are all Cicerone certified here at Brown Iron. With that being said, they trust our opinion on everything. We have 66 beers on tap. They change daily, and it's always great to see new faces and old faces. So we want people to come in, especially those people who have never had beer before, or perhaps they like the big branded beers, and we want to give them a, an opportunity to try something new and discover beer here. Anytime a keg does blow, something new takes its place. So our tap list is always changing. It's always something new. So whether you're here one time a week or one time a month, it'll be different. Michigan is full of amazing craft breweries, and this is the place on the east side of the state that you can come and taste everything. The staff at craftbeer.com agrees because they've named Brown Iron Michigan's best craft beer bar for 2016 and soon they might start winning awards for their very own craft beer. So Brown Iron just started brewing our own beers. I know it was um, long awaited, but we are super excited to launch and we've found that our crowd has been really receptive. I come here once, maybe twice a week, and lately since they've started making their home brew, enjoying that as well. The system size is not large. It's only three and a half barrels. So we have the ability to just get kooky with it, and that's our goal. Right now, we were only on the batch five right now, so we're, we're still rolling through some batches. Even though we like to make something crazy too, we have a Kolsch going here that people just like something easy to drink. They don't want a eight, 10% beer at this point. The beer's good, the food's really good. We are a brew pub, and a brew pub is classified as a place that makes beer, but also has a full service restaurant. To me, I think you, you need the two to complement each other, the food and the beer. Oh, Brown Iron's food, where do I start? Our chef specializes in barbecue food, and I think our burgers are really on point. Besides the incredible burgers and barbecue, Brown Iron's menu includes over 50 gluten-free items. We control everything that goes into our product. We don't just open up a bag of something and drop it into a fryer or open up a package and cook it. We have phenomenal food here that we make from scratch every day. So whether you're looking for great food, craft beer, or just a friendly hangout, you should pay a visit to Brown Iron Brew House. We'll be right back with comics, beer, and sci-fi on Crossover Week. You see over there? That proves my point perfectly. That's what girls are looking for these days. The loud, obnoxious party boy. But over there, that's what women are looking for. The strong, confident guy with a career. So what you're saying is, girls like $80,000 worth of beer-soaked debt and smart women appreciate a hardworking, skilled tradesman? Exactly. Fact, heating and cooling tradesmen are in demand. Go to Northwestern Tech and become an HVAC tradesman in 10 and a half months. Hey, welcome to Able Ideas. Where ideas come to life. Come on in. Here at Able Ideas in Detroit, we bring ideas to life. Whether it's a logo, a design, or a full-blown graphic novel, we have an experienced staff of artists, writers, models, and photographers ready to make your dream a reality. So if you're ready to see your vision brought to life, go to ableideas.com. Snap Camp is Metro Detroit's original Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram dealer, and we're still making the best deals every day. 
During the Big Finish event, lease a Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo for just $259 a month or a Ram Crew Cab 4x4 as low as $178 a month for 24 months. Sales service and a superior buying experience. That's Snap Camp on Telegraph Road in Redford. Snap Camp, Metro Detroit's original. Snap Camp, Snap Camp. I want to blend my business education and athletic skills and open my own fitness center. At Lawrence Tech, I'm learning how to research, present, and to really think like an entrepreneur. And I love the small college feel here, where there's always something to do. We have men's and women's intercollegiate sports and dozens of student organizations. I can't wait to apply what I'm learning here in the real world. Lawrence Tech, possible is everything. You know, I love beer. I like video games. Well, then why don't we go to Sarah and Shannon who have a segment on beer and video games that go great together. All right. Hey, it's Shannon. Sometimes you need to immerse yourself in video games to get the full experience. So this week, my friend Sarah and I are pairing killer beers with epic video games. First up, originally released in 1978, Space Invaders was created with inspiration from classic nerd hits such as Star Wars and The War of the Worlds. First released for arcade in 78 and Atari in 1980, then Nintendo in 1985, followed by Sega Saturn in 96, and finally mobile in 2007 and iOS in 2009, its simplistic gameplay cannot stop millions of gamers worldwide returning to this fun but challenging game. If you haven't heard of it or haven't played it, Check it out on the many platforms it's available on and crawl out from under the rock that you've lived in for the past 30 years. Being that Space Invaders is an absolute classic, two of my favorite breweries have brewed and bottled beers commemorating it. New Holland's Hoptronics just hit store shelves for the first time this month. Hoptronics is a double IPA zapping in at 9% ABV. It contains exclusively mosaic hops. We also have Pan Galactic Gargle Blaster by Shorts Brewing Company. This is a Belgian style double IPA, obviously containing galaxy hops, giving this brew a dank citrus aroma with fruity sweetness from the Belgian yeast. Originally created in 1992, many older millennials and Gen Ys have fond memories of Mortal Kombat dating all the way back to their first arcade romp. This game was most known for its brutal violence and bloody graphics. Even today, many gamers excitedly return to this game to perform a fatality. Mortal Kombat has been re-released with updates and new games almost every other year since 1992, up to its most recent release games for PlayStation and Xbox, Mortal Kombat X in 2015 and Mortal Kombat XL in 2016. Who doesn't love Mortal Kombat? Sound Brewery out of Pulsebo, Washington certainly does. In the Mortal Kombat beer series, they have three brews. First up is Scorpion Imperial Stout at 8% ABV. This beer gets a little fiery with chilies and vanilla bean. Next, we chill it down a bit with Sub-Zero Imperial IPA at 8.5% ABV. Hops and malt are fighting it out in this beer to make for a nicely balanced brew. I call Sub-Zero the winner of this match. He has the highest ABV. Coming up for Q1 of 2017, we have Mass Effect Andromeda. Mass Effect lovers will notice a few changes with this new game, including more dynamic and active multiplayer mode that forces the stealth player who loves to hug a corner and snipe to constantly move. What's even better is BioWare's respect to single players by giving the player option between multiplayer and single player. We are eagerly awaiting gameplay from BioWare, rumored to be first seen at the beginning of December at the Game Awards. We'll keep you updated till this beauty hits the stores. Kicking some alien butt can really work up a sweat. For that, I recommend Space Dust by Elysian Brewing Company. This IPA has a light body featuring Chinook to Bitter and late and dry additions of Citra and Amarillo. Space Dust comes in at 8.2% ABV and 73 IBUs. In its original form, The Witcher was first released in 2007 for PC. The third installment titled The Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt follows Geralt of Rivia once again but this time in a pursuit of his kin, Ciri, after her violent kidnapping at a young age by the perilous and unpredictable Wild Hunt. In a vast and ever-changing environment, the gamer has access to incredibly large maps and a storyline that is unique to each gamer based on tough decisions or everyday conversations. What I love most about The Witcher 3 is how multifaceted this game is. From weaponry to armor to alchemy and questing, 
Not only is this game still one of my favorites, even after playing it for almost a year now, but recently released expansions, Heart of Stone and Blood and Wine, along with the DLCs and gorgeous graphics, keep you coming back for more gameplay, making this game a no contest in its title of Game of the Year. Whether you're slaying monsters or humans in Witcher 3, you need to be drinking Final Absolution by Dragon Mead Brewing Company. This Belgian-style triple ale is an all-time favorite of mine, coming in at 10% ABV. This perfectly balanced beer features Saz hops, and banana and clove aromas can quickly leave you with toxicity levels as high as the White Wolf himself. All this talking has really got me thirsty. I'm really excited to go home and check out one of these beers and play my favorite video game. Thanks so much, Shannon, for the pairing, and we'll see you next time, gamers. It's crossover, not cross-dress. Oh, then I better go change my panties. Well, while he's doing that, we're gonna go to Richie with this week's home video releases. All right, this is so exciting. You guys have to be incredibly excited to be part of my segment this week. Uh, actually, Shannon, I have a video game I wanna show you. Bye, Rich, have fun. <laughs> Here's this week's releases. This week we have two delightful new Disney releases for you. First up is the remake of Pete's Dragon, starring Bryce Dallas Howard, Robert Redford, and Kyle Urban, and the story of a young boy who befriends a dragon he names Elliot. This version is more realistic and emotional than the 1977 original, but remains no less magical. If you missed this one in theaters, make sure you rent it today. We're eastbound on Millhaven Road in pursuit of a dragon! It's a dragon! You can't say dragon over the radio. The other family-friendly movie this week is the Steven Spielberg adaptation of Raoul Dahl's book, BFG, or Big Friendly Giant. When one of the world's best filmmakers takes on the work of the author of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, The Witches and Matilda, you know you are in for a treat. This movie feels like vintage Amblin era Spielberg with cutting edge digital effects, so add this to your Christmas shopping list. So hold your breaths, cross your fingers, here we go. Let's shift gears and talk about some horror selections, including The Eyes of My Mother, which is now available on demand, Amazon Video, and iTunes. The less you know about it, the better. So we'll just tell you that it tells the story of an adult woman who was traumatized as a child. While disturbing and violent, this art house horror film is also equally haunting and beautiful. A must see for the adventurous viewers out there. Fascinated by how the inside of the body looked. She always hoped I would be a surgeon one day. Next up is Don Coscarelli's Phantasm, which has been lovingly restored by superfam J.J. Abrams and his team at Bad Robot. If you haven't seen this sci-fi and horror classic from 1979, then this is the best possible way to take in the story of a small town friends trying to stop a dimension traveling tall man. You play a good game, boy. But the game is finished. Ah! Now you die. Ah! The fifth and supposedly final movie of the franchise, Phantasm Ravager, also arrives this week on Blu-ray so you can complete this epic story. This has been your Lone Ranger, Richie Rollins, here for Comic Experience Sci-Fi. I'll see you next week. Well, co-hosty, crossover week was fun, but I like it when it's just us. I know, right? You're my favorite sidekick. Oh, thank you, and I think that I better thank our sponsors at Northwestern Tech, and we want to thank our viewers for watching, and uh, we'll be back next week with more Comic Experience Sci-Fi. This bra is killing me.